Welcome to the Growth Zone. I am Christian Bartsch and I have a really interesting session for you today. So um, the key topic will be um, do we only do we always really need to buy everything in China? Can't we just source products, components, material, uh, product, production products, or anything that we can need for our own business or producing the products or services that we are actually offering our own clients? Does it all have to only come from China? Can we even do it locally or from other countries? Yes, absolutely. Even from countries in the region, you can go and buy the stuff maybe even in Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand. Uh, yeah, possible. Even Singapore and that. Even as far as Australia and New Zealand, I'm sure it's possible. And some of the stuff you might even be able to buy locally. But let's have a look at following. So we'll have these three key topics to guide us. Uh, through this very important and most current uh, subject matter that is often a pain for many people, especially when you look at the CO2 footprint that we are creating with this kind of shipments nowadays. So number one, making use of a regional sourcing marketing strategy to revive local production of products. So we want to get the companies to produce more locally. Plenty of companies as well even inside our own county, country, region who might even produce the products. But because everybody moved away and thought it has to be cheaper and cheaper, 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 everybody went off to China, which of course meant job losses in our regions, in our countries, in our continents and other continents that used to be our strategic alliance partners. Second topic, which is very important for us, is looking into the advantages and disadvantages of sourcing or producing in certain kind of regions, whether it's China or our own region or partner regions. Because it could be the same thing that you say, well, uh, maybe I can even source it from a country who is part of NATO. Yeah, if I'm in the US, I might buy it from the Canadians. Maybe I buy it from the UK, Germany, France, Italy, S Spain, Turkey. Why not? Or let's say you are um, in Sweden and say, well, I'd rather have a low footprint and maybe I buy this stuff even in Denmark or in Ireland. Maybe I can get in the UK. At least the distance is so small. It's a little bit more friendly to the environment. Um, and I can see whether it's really necessary to have this kind of product inside my offer that I'm doing. And topic number three, really, really important for us, we want to move forward on that kind of local sourcing as how to make your clients aware that it is better definitely better for them to buy from you too locally so actually to do their sourcing as well from local companies which means yourself of course because you are a local company and you are actually sourcing the same thing could be let's say let's say you've got you are a company who produces a certain kind of products whether it's cleaning material or garments anything for instance for flying schools yeah flight training schools maybe need some kind of product let's say a kind of a cleaning liquid so that oil spills that might happen from a plane when it's being maintained that you can clean it up you could source it locally a friend of mine who has a uh, company in uh, near Cardiff he does that kind of stuff. He sells these products, special products to clean. And even for older planes, if you have maybe a World War II plane, you have different kind of oil and so on. That can be quite a problem. And with his products, you can get that issue environmentally friendly solved without to have bad, evil chemicals on the game. Yeah, you can source it locally. And even he sources products that he needs to build that, not from China, but from even from countries like South Africa. So, hey, it means that we don't have to source everything from China. Just because China is the largest producing country in the world, because it produces most of the stuff and all the big corporations and so on, eventually at a certain point they decided we have to cut costs and we have to cut costs and we have to cut costs and eventually we have to cut jobs and moved everything to China because it's cheaper. 
at the beginning maybe they moved it partly to Hong Kong, they moved it to Vietnam, Malaysia and so on, and then they they really needed to cut even more, cut even more. They moved it to China. And of course, China is getting now a bit more expensive and has some other issues. So do we really need? We can even source from other countries. We can even source inside our own country or our neighboring country. We can create jobs in a neighboring country and eventually we'll create more jobs in our own country because they then can afford to buy other products or other neighbors' products because for at last they have a job again. And they can even spend more because maybe the small company is already producing more at a better price and getting more locally sourced so they actually can sell more. That kind of awareness comes as well with a change of attitudes of people towards all this whole thing about environment friendly. We need to be a bit better, but we don't need to be crazy, crazy in what we're doing. But do we need everything to be shipped around the world? just so that we use it one time and then put it in the bin, makes no sense. And if the stuff isn't properly recycled anyway, because it has some kind of stuff in there that we don't know, and might be even health hazards. Wow, you don't want that in your country. even. But people are doing that because they're trying to be cheap. And cheap is not always the best way. So let's go in deep into that really hot topic, because many people don't like to talk about that. But it's really an issue. So as we are looking into all these things about why do we really need to ship from everything from China? Um, hey, let's really look deep and say, what did we used to have? Hey, just imagine there used to be companies who used to knit garments in Europe and in USA, in Canada. Where are they all now? They're all making this stuff in China. There even used to be factories in countries like Turkey and Iran and then all other places in the Middle East who used to as well produce carpets. Nowadays, you go to a carpet seller, you have to make sure that the stuff isn't made in China. They tell you it's made in the Himalaya, and then you look on the label and it says in small print, made in China, or the RPC, Republic of, the, of People of China, or whatever. Uh, yeah, recently I bought something, and I looked at the stuff, and I thought, oh, that's cheeky. They just used that old country code, which most of the people won't really recognize. And I think, oh, I don't know, is it maybe Kentucky? Or Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever kind of stuff? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It's definitely uh, about trying to hide the real origin. Some EU regulations was coming in or, or German regulations that were trying even to force companies to even say if they have a certain amount of uh, components, I think it's... 49 or 60 or so percent of the product isn't actually produced locally, then it may not be stamped with made in Germany because it's actually 60 percent of it is actually made in China. Uh, that's definitely a good move because it actually makes us aware that a lot of our stuff is actually made highly cheaply in China and it's costing, costing really jobs in the Northern Hemisphere. That's why at the same time it's producing a hell of a problem in countries like Africa because we are taking this cheap junk, sh putting on ships, shipping it down to Africa, dumping it there and letting them f fix our garbage, which means they are uh, messing up their own environment, trying to make some money of our garbage. And that's what you don't want. So why do we need to buy a phone every, every half year or every year? There are certain companies who make quite a lot of money on that. And as we've heard, some of them even tried to slow down our phones in order to let they live longer. Not a very nice thing because it doesn't really make much sense. Because some of them are really in best format. They're just suddenly slowing down. Why can't I decide whether I want to slow it down or not? It's my business. It's not theirs. And anyway, these phones are anyway way past the time of warranty. So it doesn't matter. 
for them legally. But that's how things are. Let's go deep in and have a look at the first topic. So the first topic that we're going to jump in is about um, how to make use of a marketing strategy that really supports local sourcing. We want to make people aware that we need to revive our local industries. So things are produced locally. No more this kind of stuff where everything is produced somewhere and then we hope that something will come out of it. That's something we don't really want to happen. So what about thinking, why can't I just source locally? There are plenty of companies that are still producing. Same thing whether it's wool mills or anything else. There are plenty of companies in other areas as well that are still existing. Just because the industry locally has shrunk because everybody's gone out to the Asian region and tried to get everything cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, it doesn't mean that you are unable to source these products locally. They might look different. You might have to even help them to get up to the standards of what you need nowadays because you've further developed what you need. But there's still plenty of opportunity. And there's a huge chance that you might even get better quality, less issues. Yes, you'll have to pay a little bit more. But hey, if you don't have to throw a quarter of your stock away because of bad quality and clients sending your products back because they're garbage, because of the, the quality, uh, you'll save even money. Because in the long run, it'll be much, much easier for you to be highly profitable still in that. And if you have to maybe expect three or four months ahead that you have to order from China and you order locally, you might have to wait maybe two weeks. That's a huge difference. So you're even more flexible and you don't have to go the risk that if you order something four or six months ahead of time and suddenly you notice that it's going to be a rainy summer Nobody needs in a rainy summer bathing trunks. Yes, you could need it, but you won't sell that much. People might not even bother to buy new ones. It'd be still quite okay for one or twice going to the pool. But otherwise, no. So you have to, of course, find them. You have to go out and find them. And you have to as well go and build networks of other companies together who you want to source as well. with, Because it might be that you find a producer of something you need, somebody else needs the products as well. Together, you give them a better order. They can scale out. It becomes profitable for everybody. And you've got the stuff in a good quality and you don't have to source everything and ship it half across the, the globe just to get it into your own factories or warehouses or shops. It's just crazy because you're making yourself dependent on somebody in a different country on the other side of the world and you're totally then out of stock if they, for whatever reason, close the entire country. Yeah, the same thing is here in Europe. If you just produce or buy from one country, you have a big problem if that one country closes its gates and you're locked out. Nothing to source from. Oh, wow. That's why in the automotive industry, usually you try to have at least two suppliers for the similar kind of product. So if one supplier has some kind of issue, you're not screwed up because you haven't got anything to put into your factories, into the production lines. So learning as well from the big guys who do it as well quite smartly and try to level the risks, you actually are able to even build quite an attractive value proposition as well towards your own clients. Um, and that brings us actually to, to the key thing. What are the real disadvantages of sourcing locally. So what's the advantage? We can get the stuff faster. Yes, production in, whether it's produced in Texas and we are maybe in Florida, or we are maybe based in Sheffield and we need something that's produced in Perth or Aberdeen. It's still faster than lorry to transport the stuff overnight to us then shipping the whole thing on a container ship from China up past uh, whatever routes they can do along the Nile or 
Cup of Cope Hope or whatever, or up the north. It's just because now the, the global warming is making certain areas easier to, to commute with, with ships. It doesn't mean we have to do the same craziness. We have to don't play the, the cra same crazy, stupid game. Uh, try to source locally. And yeah, just look, for instance, at companies even like Tesla. What do they do? They sell in Europe cars and they decided we build our factory in Germany, the most expensive place where you could buy, build a battery factory. They're putting it in Germany. I don't know. Are they crazy? They could have done it in Poland even. Would have been maybe even cheaper. Yes, it's not Eurozone. Yes, but still an option. They couldn't put it in France. Well, it's also well, whatever. I don't know. Maybe they didn't get the right premises or whatever. But they could have as well just had it in China. No. They put one in Europe. They have one in, in the US. Makes sense. So why should it not make sense for anybody else to have the stuff locally produced? Or at least in the area where you're actually supplying your stuff or producing your stuff. So if you've got a factory in the in Northern America and you've got a factory in Europe, you can source the stuff locally as well. Might be a little bit of a different coloring or whatever, doesn't matter. But it's still better than shipping this stuff all around the country. Yeah. Some people, of course, uh, say, oh, well, all the environmental activists and so on, but I don't think that's a big, big topic, the environment activists, whether they climb up on trees or not. It's about what we personally think. It's a matter what we do as business owners and uh, business leaders. It's not if somebody climbs up on the mark on the tree or, or shouts around and does big speeches. That's not going to change the world. It's what we personally change in our minds and decide what we want to do with our business, how we want to source. It's our decision, not somebody else's. We are educated and, and definitely I think we are independent enough to be able to decide for ourselves where we want to source the stuff. And if we decide we want to source it locally on a continent or from other countries who are NATO partners, fine, then let's do that. That's something we can definitely do. And of course, there are different kinds of argumentations and, and people say, oh, but well, you can't do that. Then you're going to have a tariff force and so on. Honestly, if we as a company go and source stuff from other countries, is that going to cause a problem? And it doesn't mean automatically that you're not going to source anything anymore from China. It's, that, it's just that you not necessarily have to source everything from China. You can still buy products in China. Yeah. If you can't get it anywhere else, and, and it's maybe at the moment uh, no other feasible way to do it, then do it. But um, if you say, I want to source maybe 50% of the stuff I usually produce in China, I want to have it maybe produced in the US, in Canada, in the UK, in Sweden, in Germany or in Poland or Czechoslovakia, Hungary, it doesn't matter. Do it. It's your decision. You are the business leader. You decide. And that's exactly what comes as well. Because your customers, and that's coming actually to the third topic, what I really want to make you aware of, is as well thinking, what about what's happening in the heads of your clients? Maybe they're having as well some ideas. Do I really need to buy everything from China? Do I have to buy everything that has to be shipped all across the world? And it takes so long. What if I have to change something? It's always a nightmare because we need so many months ahead and so on. You don't know and all these risks and so on. What if certain things I can source locally? So you are not the only one who's actually thinking about it. There are different kinds of things. Uh, I remember 10 years ago there was in London a, a campaign and it was called uh, We Are London. You got a, as a company, you were based in London. You got these stickers or these logos you could put on your websites. We are London, and it was a promotional thing. The same thing, for instance, Donald Trump said, make America great again. Yes, that is, of course, meaning people be aware you don't have to buy everything from China. Yes, even Trump has bought stuff that's produced in China for his own stuff, but people change their minds. It's, it's not just because you buy one thing that you automatically for your entire life, you are stuck with one thing. You can even cut the amount that you're sourcing from China and source from a different place. 
is absolutely okay. You can even form strategic alliances and uh, buy from producers in different countries and even help each other if you run out of stock for your production. And it doesn't mean just because you're a competitor, you're going to fight each other to the end until you die. It's, it's ludicrous. Because in the end, if we mess up this planet and other people don't care, we are the ones who are messed and our children will be messed and our grandchildren will be messed. But it's not their problem because maybe they just don't, they only care for money and they have no children. And after them anyway, nothing comes. Other than the huge bill for cleaning up the, the environmental pollution that they've left after them. But that's the thing. We have to be more socially aware of what we're doing with our business, our contributions, how we're actually impacting as well the lives of workers, white collar, blue collar workers, it doesn't matter. And as well, hey, there are all those freelancers there, small companies, big companies, medium sized companies, it doesn't matter. We are impacting all around the world families with our decision. We're impacting as well people who maybe have a chance through us deciding to source a certain amount of quantity, let's say from Mozambique or from other countries, products, we will create jobs there. Yeah. As an example, let's say my company would now start sourcing certain products from South Africa. Maybe I can create with that five new jobs in South Africa. What about if I decide to set up a part of my call center that does sales for a certain region in South Africa. I might be able to create 10 jobs. 10 jobs means 10 families who have an income. Yeah, And those 10 families maybe can even support 10 other families because they're able to buy their products locally because they've got ma more money suddenly available. And because they have more money available, they can maybe buy products in Europe or in the US or in Canada and that supports again 10 other kind of families of course at different kind of levels and so on but in the long run we get a more um, leveled out environment we cannot think the communist way that we move from A to B and to Z and everything will be super and so on that doesn't work because of course you always have uh, loss on the way whether it's bank fees, shipping costs, environment, pollution, and so on and so on. But what we can do by making our decisions a bit more impactful on what we're doing, we can actually change that stuff really in a very positive way. And yes, I see many politicians on the one side um, agreeing and disagreeing on the other side with people like Greta Thunberg and, and other politicians and young people as well and older people. Um, on different kinds of topics, whether it's environment, history or politics, social en engagement, other kinds of things. It is really important what we're doing. Uh, even our marketing message that's going out, we can impact the revenue that we are able to generate because if we are sourcing locally, it means as well that maybe our products are even higher quality and our customers, when we make them aware of the advantages that we have decided to go and book our bets on by actually going and creating jobs locally, they will be most likely willing to support that as well. Yes, there's always certain things when you're lazy and you're unhappy about certain things, you'll say, okay, I don't care, I buy from there and there, and I don't care. But after a while, when you use it and you notice it breaks down and say, ah, why did I do that? I shouldn't have bought this cheap stuff. You go out in the shop and you go product, buy a product product. As an example, I have been buying products, for instance, from Dyson because I like the way they're doing it. But I don't want to have the products if they're produced somewhere in China, cheap and the service is bad and everything doesn't work and so on. That creates huge havoc for me as a user, whether I am the consumer or the business who says, I want to have my cleaning stuff to use good product from Dyson because I know they're going to clean properly. They may, may be more noisy, but they are product. And the same thing if I'm, for instance, in the yeah, US and I say, I want to have something that's maybe locally, I want to buy a plane maybe that is produced in the US, then I'll maybe buy a Learjet or maybe I'll buy a Cessna, Cessna or maybe um, a 
Piper or anything like that. I could do that same. And even if you go and say, well, I, I'm not buying a plane, but I'm, I want to buy maybe for my family a dinghy or I want to have a, a toy pool for my child. I don't know what's in all these chemical stuff in there. And I'm not the chemical expert. I'm not going to check and test every product I'm buying. I usually rely on the customers and producers on. They do all the job, but they can with the quantity. And there are plenty of people out there who are trying to make an extra dime at the expense of our health and our children's health. And that's something that we don't want. So be more aware of it yourself and send out the message as well towards your clients that you see this an important thing. We have to source more locally. We have to become as well in this way more independent from one producing country, especially with China who has practically taken everything into themselves and made us all dependent on them. Because it doesn't matter whether we are in Switzerland, whether we are in Sweden, Germany, United Kingdom, Ireland, France, Canada, Mexico, USA, even Brazil, we are all dependent on many products that are being produced in China. And when China locked up and was unable to ship, we all suffered because people were running and doing crazy stuff. Some were trying to buy masks like crazy. Others were trying to buy toilet paper. Others were trying to get guns. Others were trying to get uh, all sorts of other crazy stuff. I wouldn't name it here. Um, and sometimes you really think, why is everybody going as well for totally different stuff but acting in the same crazy behavior? Yeah, it's like as if you say, okay, uh, obviously certain things that might happen whilst you're locked down, uh, not so important, but other stuff is important. Uh, yeah, okay, if you need so much toilet paper, but you haven't got enough food to, drink, to eat or you haven't got enough liquid, um, somehow it doesn't make sense. But yeah, that's sometimes craziness that happens when people just overreact in certain situations. Nevertheless, we have to be aware of, we have to become more independent we cannot be dependent so much on a country that produces in the end like 60% of these kind of low level products. We need to create as well jobs for uh, lower income areas in our countries as well. We have to create jobs as well through producing and sourcing locally much more. And we can source as well from other countries. As I said, the example, for instance, from my friend in, in Cardiff. He sources some of the stuff from the UK, some from the US, some stuff from South Africa. I don't really know whether he sources anything from China. I don't know. But um, from the way I understand and I see his attitude and his uh, values in that, I think he'll value more to buying the stuff from, from South Africa than from a different country. And, and the same thing happens with, with other products. If you're in Japan, yeah? you are able to decide whether you're going to buy a product that's made in Japan or in South Korea, Malaysia, Australia, USA, Germany, Canada, Sweden, United Kingdom, Ireland, doesn't matter. You are free of deciding what you want to do. But you must be aware that with every decision you are impacting families anywhere around the world, whatever we design, we, we're still impacting as well people in China as well if we change. That's uh, the horrific situation that we always impact defending whatever. But even if we spread our impact, we can help others at the same time. And that's something that we need to take into consideration when we're doing what we're doing. I hope this was great. And yeah, Take time, think about that, have a look at what you really can outsource or source locally. So we will be looking into different kinds of strategies for the next episodes. And the next one, we will be focusing on one country 
and that is Switzerland. The key idea of the episode will be how can you utilize Sweden's powerful brand to generate more sales abroad. And there we will be looking at three key ideas. What is the outside perception of Swiss brands? Secondly, how can you align your business to benefit from larger brands? And thirdly, get your market entry by using these strategies based on a business case to be highly successful. So, so we will be focusing on Swiss brands and companies who want to go from Switzerland and enter other markets, whether it's in the European Union, United Kingdom, Scandinavia, Europe, Eastern Europe, or even going towards North America. The same would apply as well if you are looking, for instance, from a perception of a Swedish brand. Let's say you are in Stockholm and you want to enter other regions. Uh, Swedish brands have shown that it is absolutely possible to do the same thing by applying the, uh, let's say, the, the positive image of Swedish brands. Let's have a look, for instance, just look at uh, brands like Volvo and Saab. These are the big brands and Ericsson that. And then look at smaller brands like Happy Socks. That's where you can see it is all possible. And uh, it doesn't always have to be as um, old-fashioned on and serious like the car industry. Textile industry can be quite fun and entertaining. So um, next edition is Switzerland. And then we'll be looking at an other topic area and maybe taking again one country as a model and see how we can actually apply it as well for other countries in business, whether we are exporting products or services, trying to grow or get other business partners to do joint ventures in other countries. Global trade has its potential if you do it the right way. Well, that's all for today's episode of The Growth Zone. Thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Spotify so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you haven't got your signed copy of the marketing book, stop by on our website at book.prmediareach.com and hurry because the reserve batch of signed books are almost sold out. So, the address is bookprmediareach.com I'll repeat, book.prmediareach.com <laughs>